everyone, and welcome back. This nub video is focused on theaters and stadiums, and maybe a couple Odeons, the smaller theaters as well. Now, we have looked at this phenomenon before very preliminarily. Uh, I have a video from about a year or two ago looking at about four or five examples of theater nubs. But we have fleshed out that catalog to over 25 examples today. There's obviously more going on than we first thought. Now, these are mostly centered in Greece and Turkey, but there could be more. There's plenty of more theaters out there, and we have lots of photos to look through. But we can definitely say this is a subcategory of nubs, a sub-phenomena related to the greater global phenomena. And I am joined again today by Phil from the Ancient Alternative View, and he's going to help me relate some of these findings to you. Phil, how are you today, and what do you have to tell us about this new potential um, podcast or uh, Q&A style <laughs> channel we have coming up? Uh, good evening, Andrew. It's a pleasure to speak to you again. And welcome to the audience, and thanks ever so much indeed for having us. And you're right, it's interesting times with regards to yourself and myself. Andrew and I have decided to do a new channel called Ancient History Views. And what that's going to enable everyone to do is have a platform to come and speak to us on super chats on anything that they want to with regards to ancient mysteries and the nubs. And um, with regards to any of the hallmarks, any of the cataloging, the free stuff that we give out online, uh, with regards to uh, ancient history criticisms, online catalogues that you can go on to and get for free. And we can give you those at any point coming to myself, Ancient Views and Andrew's Ancient History Criticisms accounts on Twitter. Right. And you can have these catalogues for free. And we welcome you all to come and have a chat with us. And we look forward to having you there. But they're going to need a certain amount of subscribers for this to go forward. So at the end of this video, please click on the link to the new Ancient History Views channel. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to seeing you guys there where we can hash out all the ancient mysteries and all the hallmarks together that's right thank you very much indeed that's right we do need a uh, a community status so we need over i think a thousand subscribers but once yeah. we once we reach that threshold we will be able to take super chats and you guys will be able to ask us questions we'll do a format of about maybe half the video talking about certain topics uh, talking to other researchers and then half the video we will take questions from the audience and if you guys have good questions we will spend the time investigating them and if we have the answers and the photos we can go through them together so i think you guys out there will be able to see how andrew and i actually research together we're right. going to show you how we go out there and find the nubs the bevel blocks the polygonal stone what are right. the hallmarks do you even know if you don't this is the one-stop channel to come and find out exactly what the hallmarks are and what the answers to the ancient mysteries may be and we look forward to having you there guys thank you very much indeed okay guys so today we have at least 25 separate examples of nubs at or around theaters stadiums or odeons around turkey and greece so this is a very localized regional phenomenon now we've seen nubs all over the world you know in india there's the step wells some of that might be related to this phenomenon. We might look at some of those examples at the end. But for the most part, this seems to be one of the only regions where this expression of nubs happens. But again, there are many, many theaters out there, and a lot of them have been destroyed and rebuilt, and the restoration process sometimes removes the seats and some of the staircases and replaces the blocks. So we might be missing a lot of the nubs, because it doesn't seem like they're always in the same place. So we'll look through some examples here, going alphabetically, I guess, is the best way. And we will just look at the different expressions and the different patterns and clusters they make and just the different places that they're put. I mean, why do they put them in some of these places? They're obviously not a good lifting spot. That's, that's right out. And then you see they're not a uniform uh, system of levering or moving the blocks either. That's right out. So it's, it's a very quirky and random almost expression sometimes that they're just... Uh, spattered around the the seats and the walls of these theaters and, and temples nearby so we'll jump right in with a at Azenwa, i believe is how it's pronounced in turkey and phil will go through some of these photos here and you can tell me your thoughts as we go along now it's it's a pretty ruinous theater right and you have small areas 
and larger areas. So this is probably the smaller Odeon, and you have the larger theater behind. And you can see there's some evidence of some blocks that are lipped in the background. That's an interesting phenomenon. You'll see more of that as we go along at most of these sites, actually. So we're going to go through a few photos of the perimeter, and then we'll dive into the details. So you'll see, again, the seats are really ruined. And it's going to be hard to tell if there are any nubs on any of these seats in this condition. And we've looked from all the photos we can find in Google Earth and Google Maps. There doesn't seem to be any on the seats. But where they do appear, it seems to be on these flanking walls down at the bottom, down at the base. This is where things start to become interesting, isn't it, Andrew? Because you can actually see the lip stone mm -hmm. and the lip above where the nubs actually are. Mm -hmm. And in some instances, in other areas, you could consider that top lip, as we discuss it, as like a bevel, but it's kind of not bevel edged all the way around, is it? This is what we call mm -hmm. lip stone. And if you look at the bottom of it, where the nubs are situated, mm -hmm. it would make that non-conducive to where you would try and lift a block because the nub wouldn't protrude out as far as the lip stone above it. That's right. So. Yeah, and, and I like the charred effect as well that you get with some of this stone. We get this on different sides, don't we, worldwide? Yeah. And do you notice also, Andrew, the standardized semicircular shape that we see here? That's it's right. relative to India and Peru. That's right. That's right. And Egypt as well. Mm -hmm. Egypt too, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is just a quirky little spot here. Why did they decide to put them only on these flanking walls? Now, this yeah. is... This does seem weird in this context, but then if you look at some of these other examples today, we will see that it's actually part of some of their standardized placements. Delphi, for example, we'll look at, also has them on these flanking walls. So it's not necessarily a one-off phenomenon. They do seem to repeat, but not always in the same expressions. There definitely seems to be variation within these nubs, within the clusters, their shapes, their placements. Indeed, the second row up at the bottom, you've got a sort of what looks like a double nub placement, but directly underneath it, you've got the lipped stone itself. Mm -hmm. So again, how would you lift from that when you've got a lipped stone underneath it and you've got the nubs directly above it? That's right. Kind of wouldn't be conducive to that at all, would it, Andrew? No, the lip stone would uh, would kick off the rope off of the nub. Same with these theater seats we're going to look at. The theater seats have an overhang. And the nubs are underneath the overhang, so rope would get. And the block above almost looks like it's got three nubs on it, Andrew. The semicircular to the right, the one in the middle, and it, the one at the left. It might, yeah, yeah. See, the triple nub block is another. Yeah, is another yeah. very important block. We, because... we see that above the pyramid of Menkaure in Egypt, yes. and we see that in the streets of Volante Tambo in Peru. And that's right. We've got another example right here. Yeah, we have one at, uh, I believe, it's the Temple of Apollo in Didyma. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's, it, it's a very important nub. It, it shows you that you don't need them for lifting because there's three of them. If it was just, you know, corners that were being lifted, what's the middle one about? And some of these blocks... You, you, could, you could also say the nubs that are above... Uh, sorry, the blocks that are above mm -hmm. these nub blocks don't have nubs on. So That's true. Why haven't they if they were for lifting? So. Very true. Again, we, we, we've debunked the lifting theory in one image, so... Yes, yes, yes. There we go. I'm sure we could do that again a lot through this episode. Yes. We have a few more angles here we'll show. Now, these photos are kind of hit and miss on quality because we're going off of tourist photos off of Google Earth and Google Maps, but these screenshots seem to be the best quality and of the best angles that we can find. It takes a lot less time than going through Google image searching and trying to just stumble upon them. It's better to actually go to the sites on Google Maps or Google Earth and look at the photos that they have for these sites. Yeah, it's clearly the best way around it to do it. And yeah. Regardless of quality, you can clearly see here the configuration of nubs, the semicircular, the square, the, mm -hmm. maybe the depth changes that are slightly different, but nonetheless you are getting that lipped block effect above where the nubs are, aren't you, Andrew? That's right, that's right, yeah. And one other angle here, pretty good. Like Phil was saying, you can see that some of them are more rectangular, some of them are more oval, and then some of them have that half-rounded shape, that uniform standardized shape we see in lots of different places. And some of them are, just, some are very small and just nondescript shapes. So, 
and obviously look in the background of how ruinous this site is. So that might be also a theme going forward. I think Xanthos in Turkey as well has some seats that look pretty uh, devastated like this. Indeed. And I believe we, some of these, the, the quality gets a little bit, you know, iffy, but I think this was the only one I think I could find where maybe we'll say right here, there's a yeah, nub. Yeah, you can clearly can you see, see that, that one. There, that yeah, there. that's probably the only nub I saw on any of the seats here. Could be more, but we're dealing with the photos that we have. So it's definitely um, a phenomenon that it, it extends beyond just the theaters themselves. One of the features at this site, this bridge, now you're looking on the front, you don't see them, but look underneath in the arched sections, you will see nubs. So it, it's not just a phenomenon that's local to a specific feature or a specific temple. It seems like all the constructions made by this builder group in these regions they were using the same nub expression, nub method, nub, nub technology. One thing that you have to take into consideration here is there's a lot of mortar used in between the nub blocks, isn't there, Andrew? True, true. Um, and you don't get that, do you, worldwide, really? We tend to look at this as more of a megalithic sort of kind of build, but true. the nub expression obviously extends a lot further than anyone would have thought, really, into this kind of bridge system as well. And mm -hmm. Yeah, the configuration is sporadic, if you notice. Agreed. It's not on every block. Agreed. And you'll notice that it's not really a, a lifting method. You know, they, they go up into the arch. They're just... Yeah, agreed. It's, yeah. Just, it's almost like a surface treatment. It's more of a more surface, more. yeah, more of a surface embellishment or a surface treatment that we're meant to look at them like this, like they're meant to be there like this. Absolutely. And next, we're going to go to Alabanda Theater. And some of these we don't have that many photos for. And obviously, we're going through a lot today, guys, so we're probably not going to click on every single photo, but you're more than welcome to look in the folder for yourself and add more if you find more. But we're going to try to show you just the best of the best today. Now, for general context, the exterior of the theater is this interesting split block and ashlar and different rows, uh, you know, slim rows and thick rows of stones. That's, that's an interesting uh, design, I guess you want to call this. We have a few. Indeed. We have a few other structures like this that that use this design, this swelling surface of the blocks and the split ashlars. We can maybe show that in some other videos. But today we're going to focus on the interior of the theater because that's this, that's where they seem to be. Shapes, standardized, square, mm -hmm. rectangular, and it seems that they're on the steps now. Why would you leave a nub on a step? That potentially you could trip up over. True. Yeah, underneath a seat maybe, but on a staircase, it would seem futile to leave a nub that could potentially trip someone over. Excellent example. Thank you to Ziggy Dan for this one. Mm -hmm. I actually found it one day and uh, he'd already found it, so cheers Ziggy. Thank That's you right, that. yes. And we also have other step examples of nubs at the Didyma Temple uh, of Apollo and a lot of the step wells in India and other temple foundation steps. So this is not just a phenomenon that's just uh, in Greece and Turkey, but it does seem at theaters there is this concentration of nubs around seats and stairs. Inside this arch, we have one lone nub. And there's a few other why arches. One, why one lone nub? Right. If you if you required that for any of the above reasons, Andrew, it certainly wouldn't be on the bottom, would it? No. It would be above, and um, it's almost like an expression, isn't it? We were here kind right. of thing. Right, yes. We have other close-ups of it here. You can see it's almost like been pressed together. It's almost like a vertical rectangle, right? It's been like... So looks like an imprint. Right. It looks like a, an imprint within to the block that kind of left it almost a bit different than a surface treatment. Right, right. A bit rougher than right. we'd usually see on a nub block. Right, right. You can see all the scooping on the left-hand yeah. side of it, right? Yeah, really weird. And then another angle of the seats we have. Decent quality here. You can see a few of them in the middle. They actually go most of the way down, but the most prominent ones here on these few steps, you can see. You can see a lot of weathering, can't you, on the actual steps around, maybe chipping off and things like that. But yeah, yes. the nub blocks, the nub steps still remain, don't they? Yeah, and it's funny that they're not under the seats they, they seem to no, follow. It's not on this example. No, in other examples they will though. Yes. And then one final cool little angle here that someone took. 
you can see in the background a big rectangular nub at the bottom that's got the corner broken off, but then it kind of changes shapes. It goes square, more rectangular, more shallow, and then it kind of fades away as it goes up. It be begs the point and what the process was to be able to do that into that kind of stone into a stair step construction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't need them there. They weren't left to chip off later because they're not on every stone. Right. So they were left on purpose. They were specific as, as a byproduct. Mm -hmm. So remains the most intriguing hallmark discussion in the world to me. I agree. These, these are so weird in their placements. It's like they don't have rhyme or reason sometimes. So we're going to go to Ariconda next. This is one of our favorite sites. Fantastic site, yeah. Just because of first we got to mention the box that's there, right? The box has the uniform standardized shape nub, the, the half round nub. And it's got really and interesting. It's interesting thing. part of that standardized shape. No, busy. It has a pitted middle right. with a bevel line. Yes. That Look at directly that. Directly goes underneath to the lower part of the box to the higher part of the box. Isn't that wild? And so, so same on the nubs. The nubs themselves have that same little beveling on the bottom. That little rough versus smooth transition. Very wild. Indeed, yeah. And and then down at the bottom, of course, you say, "Well, those are for lifting." We'll look down here. If you go down to the bottom left, you have at least three, maybe four over here on the right. These are not for lifting. Look how random they are. This one is very small. And they've also got the lip over the top and the block that would stop that, wouldn't it? Andrew, absolutely. You know? It would kick off the rope because it's a leverage point. You know, you would be reaching under to try to get to this purchase point of the nub. And the, the overhang of the lip would prevent that. Well, the lip itself would, if you were going to lift, would be what you'd live from. Certainly wouldn't be the nub that's shallower underneath. That's impossible. Makes more and sense. I'm an engineer with uh, the Royal Navy. Sure. That's impossible. The lip would be a more substantial purchase point. Agreed. Okay, indeed. So this theater is very interesting nearby. At first, you don't see them. Now, you might be confused. You might look at these banister pieces. These are called finials going up. And this is a decorative motif, kind of like the claw foot on a tub. Or these are more like the top of a banister. This is a finial, and this is these are not nubs because they are all the same shape, all the same design. But if you look close, <laughs> look very close, you'll see nubs sp speckled throughout the seats, and these are obviously not uniform, different shapes. It's not standardized. So you'll have and you can definitely up. see that they're underneath a lipped seat. Again, right? Yes. So oh, right. It, it, it's 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 a point where the lip actually comes over further than where the nub does. That's right, that's right. So they're relative for a purpose, but what that is, we're not quite sure at this point in time. But they're not on every seat. No. They're not all over the, the theatre. No. Some of the larger, shapes. Yeah, some of the larger blocks don't have them, but these smaller blocks do. Why? Not centered on the block either. You know, very strange phenomenon. It always has been. Here's one over yeah. here that might even have two nubs on it. You get really close. Maybe three even. Maybe another triple nub expression. It gets hard to tell sometimes, yeah. right? But we, we're confident that this is a nub site. We have, I believe, a couple more angles, but those are pretty much the best ones. Uh, if you want to see some more proof that it is a nub site, we have other features, like outside where we just were with the box, this foundation, look down at the right, more nubs. And certainly the foundation blocks prove that the yes. blocks above are bigger. If you wanted to put them above, wouldn't you have a lifting boss above, not below? Right. You're not hanging anything at the bottom for people to see. Not at the very not bottom. Unless they're borrowed. No, no, this is the very bottom level, guys. This is surface level. So yeah, the standardized over... circular like we see in Egypt. Korea, right here again. Yes. And India. Then, yeah, they're kind of uh, off center sometimes. They don't always line up perfectly even. Again, some of that quirky uh, non uniformity of them. And then if you want to see a few more examples, I believe I had one more on the side of the temple proper. Yeah, over here on the left-hand side. Now, first of all, it's lipped block on the right, but then it turns into more of a beveled block on the left. And if you zoom in, you'll see right above where me and Phil are on our box, more nubs right here. And again, like Phil was saying, that scorching or that, that, that color change. But you notice how very ornate the bevel blocks are above, very shallow. Mm -hmm. With the pitted middle, almost like the surface treatment changed from bevel block to nub. That's right. And then across to the right, you've got the bevel blocks that are shallow and then into a lipped stone. And also, you see, Phil, there's a filler stone peeking through in the doorway. So 
A lot of different things going on here. The polygonal nature stuff in the background, the formal ashlars in the foreground, bevel blocks, the lipped blocks, and then nubbed blocks as well. So Indeed, yeah. You can notice at the back the more cyclopean style stone work, can't you, that we're going to look at shortly, more around to the back end of that. Right. That relates to more like Cartier on in Turkey. That's right, that's right. I have, I think, one more photo here from the outside where you, you can see, yeah, right. these sharp angled polygonal with these filler stones that are sometimes triangular, maybe trapezoidal. Yeah, very interesting. So that, Absolutely. So that ties it in again to the global phenomenon that we see from Easter Island to Peru. Ethiopia, that's India. Right. That's right. That's the right. stones are everywhere. That's right. So next we'll move on to Athens, and we have a lot to talk about at Athens, but we'll try to keep it to the theaters themselves, although the theaters proper, the seats and stairs, are not where we're finding the nubs. As a matter of fact, we're finding them on these walls around the theater steps. So first, let's talk about the retaining wall. So we'll give you a good context here. This is one of the lower theaters, and you'll see that these are the seats over here to the right, the Acropolis above, but what we're looking at right now is down here on the foundation. You're seeing a very refined bevel block straight away with the nubs, aren't you? That's right. And they're not a very here. standardized shape as well to the right hand side, the semicircular, which goes uh, into a rectangular shape. Right. So yep. If you could perform something so ornate in the bevel block, why would you need to have a standardized semicircular nub, a rectangular nub, if you could do such ornate work within your beveling? Agreed. Yeah, all the beveling is uniform and perfect, and it, it the same depth along the rows. But then each nub along the row is a different shape and a different size and orientation. And why aren't the nubs on the blocks higher up? That's true. Why does it stop as it goes up? It's only this foundational phenomenon. And it, it goes all along the bottom. We'll show more of that. So here we are again look, looking at it from the opposite angle, right? You can even see to the left-hand side on what seems to be an older part. And you can see that there's a definite bevel line at the bottom of that as well. Yes, and the bevels are on all these blocks, but they're different. If you notice, you get close, they're different as they go up the rows. So you'll see the beveling at first is the the incisement below and on the, on the edges. It's recessed, and the middles are, are prominent. They stick out, exaggerated here like in the front. And then other times... You get like that, but you get like a puffy bevel. Right, right. Middle, pitted middle into a smooth nub. Mm -hmm. into a more pitted middle nub block. Right. Which shows that they almost could change surface treatment at will with yeah. these hallmarks. And you go up the wall, you'll see the same thing. You'll see the nubs disappear, the bevels refine to the point right above here where we're looking no longer at a bevel, but we're looking at a pitted recessed middle. This is a completely yeah. different expression here. Completely. So it's, it's weird that it morphs from the bottom to the top like this. And Almost block to block, like a surface treatment change as they go, isn't it? Right, right. As they go up the wall, it seems like they're changing the surface treatment. It's getting more refined. They're leaving all these rougher features down at the bottom, and they're leaving the nubs exposed. And obviously, look again, this small, tiny one, you're not going to lift by that. It's, it's obviously way too small. And it's been carved to be that small. You see the, the pitting around it. It was that size initially. This one here. And the, the block initially. above it, Andrew, has got nothing, and it's the size of all three of them. Completely smooth, and it's a, I, I see no other marks that would indicate where nubs used to be. And we had about three or four more photos to show you. Now, we could go all over the Acropolis. There's tons of nubs all over the Acropolis proper and the temples up there and the retaining walls, but because of our limited time today, we're going to try to stick to the stadiums and stadium areas. So first, another interesting spot that I found. Again, it's on this back wall. Now the top part, it looks pretty ruinous, and if there were nubs, they've been broken off, or it's been too damaged to, to tell. But if you look down here at the bottom, there's one lone nub on this ashlar construction. This is an original bit of the stadium entryway, and you can see some of it has been you know, crudely reconstruct reconstructed, but here you see the blocks in a nice precision-fitted format. 
again, I think it's important, Andrew, to mention the shape at this point on that singular nub. Seems, mm. it, although the photo is ever so slightly grainy, you can pretty much tell it's standardised semicircular, can't you? Right, right. And again, it's right at the base. Yes, like right all the at the very base. Mm -hmm. So we have maybe one more angle, I think, that'll show it a little bit better here. The quality is a little bit better, and you can trust us a little bit better. But you can see that it, the obvious light color and the shadow on it, and the, the, the let's talk about the the block that it's on. It's really skinny, right? Why would that? It is quite interesting because on the other photo it almost looks like one block, doesn't it? But right. on this clearer image, you can definitely see it's on a very skinny, tall block at the bottom. Yeah, almost reminds you of like a, a column base that we see in India with them on or something along uh -huh. those lines. Yeah, ever so slightly small, you wouldn't lift that into place with that knob. And no. accordingly to the right hand side with the bigger block, you would definitely have them on if you were moving it, wouldn't you? But no. No, right. again, we shouldn't meant harp on about the lifting, should we? To be no. quite honest, I think we've debunked that enough this episode already. I, I agree, but you know that this is the perfect example we use, and like you mentioned, also in Peru at Ollante Tambo, the the, yeah. the very slim slender stones with the nubs on them those were not used for the lifting obviously those are the obviously esoteric nubs like we're looking at here so yeah, yeah for brevity we're going to we're going to keep moving and and we won't harp on about that but just an interesting spot you know a, a, a surviving bit down here of the original construction and then here Phil down in the stadium area again we see another interesting shaped nub the triangular nub it is very fascinating because we find that in Lebanon in Baalbek, don't we, on the base around the back. Mm -hmm. And just for context, this is sort of right where we were just looking at the front. And uh, you can see a bevel edge pitted middle as well in front of you there, Andrew, you know. Oh, yeah, right here in the middle, right? Yes, yeah, that was just like we were looking at over here on the retaining wall, the same bevel edge and pitted middle. Yeah, yeah. It's fascinating with the mineralogy colours because they're very much the same as the prior photo that we looked at. You've got that almost grey, haven't you? Mm -hmm. And then below on the other one was the surface treatment with the nubs and the pitted middles. Mm -hmm. It's very, very similar. Maybe that was some kind of, I don't know, pattern that they used with their mineralogy with the grey and the white. Potentially, right? Yeah. And it's interesting that on this side, we have the nub up high, whereas on the other side, we have the nubs down low. So, low, yeah. not sure if it's the original configuration, but this and is different styles of nubs on the other one that was semi circular, yeah. very deep sort of bottom, and this one's very much triangular, isn't it? I didn't see any triangles on the other side, right? So, this might no. be a different expression for and higher up. Absolutely. To yeah. Okay, here and then there's just another good close up of this one. You can see the texturing around it and the, the marks, you know, the molding of it. And it kind of matches. It, it, it also shows there, Andrew, it hasn't been chiseled into place. It would be ridiculous to take that much material back to leave the nub like that, wouldn't it? And you right. can see it clearly isn't. It's almost like a surface treatment that's brushed over yeah. a kind of nub area and around it, isn't it? Yeah, and we'll see that at Xanthos at the end of, the, of this video. Uh, Xanthos has that on a few of the, the column, or I guess you call them uh, uh, obelisk bases. So we just wanted to mention this one because it is a step phenomenon. Higher up on the Acropolis, we do have nubs here on these steps. You notice the shape of those as well. Again, it's back to that standardized semicircular. That's right. That's and right. It, it, this photo being so clear, you have got to remember to look at every bit of the photo because the Athens Acropolis is covered in nubs. That's and true. there's so many on this photo, it's unbelievable. In the left-hand corner, you have a couple up here, and then it go down a little further. And just above our box there, you'll see a string of them going down this plinth here, this element here, and maybe one or two more down here, right? They do go up the side, yeah. And if you notice on the shape of those, they seem more square, don't they? They all do, right, right. Interesting variations. So why, why the difference in shape would be a great question for everyone. Why would we get triangular, square, semicircular shaped mm. nubs on some blocks, not other blocks? It's just beyond belief. And why would they be on stairs? Wouldn't it be a trip hazard if they protruded anymore, like we suggested before, Andrew? Yeah, and some of them are tiny, and again, off-center. Just, you know, even if they were decorative, they're not centered. So it's very interesting that they've each got their own expression that is unique to the block. Absolutely. I mean, as shallow as they are there, it reminds me of the hieroglyphs that 
ancient Egypt where you actually see that shape all over the ancient hieroglyphs, don't you? This one, yeah, this one might as well be the one in the portcullis chamber. So Yeah. Yeah. Well, very interesting. Okay, we'll move on to Boutrent, Albania next. And you guys are free to look at the rest of those in your own time. This is the one outlier, right? This is outside of the Greece and Turkey territory. And we don't have too much to talk about. There aren't that many photos. But again, it's got a lot of extra um, rubble-built stuff on top of it, additions. So some of these sites, they might have been small Odeons, and then they've been built up bigger into stadiums and other things. So this one, they're not on the steps. This is more of a really, you know, subtle example because you have to look on the sides. Again, these flanking walls, but you'll see that there is a, like a, a texture change. There's lipped blocks, and then on some of them, they like turn into nubs here. Like this, these two here, I'm going to cl classify these two as nubs. What would you say, Phil? Almost with that puffy nature, it reminds me of the Kurgan Akersh, Royal Kurgan Akersh, how they can change textures so freely from bevel edge blocks into flat into nubs dependent on the surface treatment they want to use. That's right, right. Like here in the corner, too, is just a, an abrupt change. And this lipped block phenomenon we've seen already at these other theaters, you already start to recognize it here. It's like an abnormal texturing. It doesn't really fit a uniform uh, finish like the rest of the of the of the surfaces are. Look at the rest of them; they're all nice and finished. Why why didn't they finish them here? What what, what could have gone? Indeed, yeah. You know, did they did they have a, a plan to in put plaques in here or other you know adornments? I don't know, but they definitely look like they scooped it and you know they did the surface processing the same way as our other theaters in Turkey and Greece. Absolutely. And then just you know maybe to, to like uh, nail home the point. Well, first of all, we'll show you the 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 big view of it now these these are interesting blocks i do want to note these blocks they are, they do have like a mineralogy pattern to them now look really close you'll see like a white mineralogy in the middle of all or most of all these blocks and if you follow it around it actually goes through all the middle of these seats this like white was it quartz or something in the in the middle it's like a quartz content yeah it's a... yeah i don't think that's algae or anything that's something else and they, these seats do, and some of the stairs, I guess these are stairs too. No, this is a seat. Have these weird pinch holes or corner holes in them. There's a few other theaters have this. You see here's another one up here. You can see the light going through it. So there's other hallmarks going on within these theaters. But as far as, you know, the topic we're talking about today, it's more of the perimeter and, you know, the exterior of the theater. But then we also have things like uh, polygonal architecture, right? The, this uh, uh, cyclopean style like we were talking about earlier, again. You know, almost, yeah. almost reminds you a bit like Catieron, doesn't Again, it? How that's been put together. Triangles, like for very cyclopean stones. style. Exactly the same. And then uh, another really interesting wall I like uh, has some L-shaped blocks or like corner cutouts that could be filler stones here, and then other ones here at the joinery. Maybe that's a drain spout <laughs> or something or for for draining. I don't know, but an interesting section of of megalithic wall that does fit in with this style that we've seen in all these other sites. And then just uh, one final photo, we'll look at the, the doorway here, at, and you can see there's definitely some angles, extra angles going on, some polygonal walls. L-shaped blocks as well. L-shaped blocks, right. So, yes, this is all connected architecture here at this site, not just the stadium, but these other uh, auxiliary structures. And then we'll move on to Delphi. Now, Delphi, we're probably going to spend some time on. Delphi, we have a lot to talk about, because this one is probably the best panoramic we have. So they're going to be on the flanking walls, right, Phil? They're going to be on the yeah. seats. They're going to be on the stairs. Down and here. on the bottom blocks of that lower wall, you see? Yes. So we All can, the way around the front. We can it's zoom It's almost in. like that they angle up towards the steps and then sporadically go around the steps. That's and right. And if you notice on these specific steps, Andrew, they're very much lipped as well, aren't they? So very any much. of the nubs that are underneath them, that same protrusion line, would yeah. go over where the nub is positioned. Absolutely. And, I, and, and you notice if you look at the bottom, they're not on every block. No, no, clearly now, not. Now, I, I, I surmised with uh, Dave Hanaran, Ukrainian Utopia on Twitter, massive shout out uh, about these being some sort of astro aligned clocking system for specific star dates or something along them lines, just as a theory. And it would be ideal for us now we've got a selection of 25 to maybe put lines all the way through where the actual nubs go on these amphitheaters and see if we can find any correlations at all. Something like that, because it feels like I want to be standing down here and looking at these nubs from this central 
vantage point. It seems like that's absolutely yeah. that's why they're put where they are to to figure out some kind of code or you know some kind of builder's technical language. You can see them on the middle steps as well, going up the uh-huh. row of stairs themselves, let alone the front here. Yes, and there's a triangle in the middle of it. And again, this kind of like harkens back to these other theaters we've looked at, where it's up these central staircases of the, the yeah of, of the. And again, wouldn't they be a trip hazard? Yeah, they for would be anybody that were going up. Sure, the over here staircase. as well. Staircase. Yeah, especially like this one sticks out very far. That one would. And then some of these others, maybe they did stick out further, and maybe that happened in the past, and they decided to chisel some of them off. Some of them do look a bit broken, and then it seems to stop, right? It, as it goes up, it stops in both cases. Maybe there's one yeah. more. Ah, again, off-center on that block there. But yeah, it, it's, it's more of a, a, a lower foundational phenomenon. Again, here's some interesting ones. Look at that, the half-round uniform standardized shape. Perfect example. Perfect. That could almost literally be on the Port College Chamber. Agreed. And look below it. Those Clamp, are couldn't it? Those are more uh, like India down here, these more organic and ships. And the bottom right, you've got a perfect triangle in which we were looking at on the last set of images. Yeah, yeah, Athens. Athens. Correct, yeah. This is, uh, this is like the most prominent, like 3D of the of the triangle nubs I've ever seen, right? This is This is pretty impressive. Uh, so, Indeed, yeah, it does protrude a long way. You can see the shadow underneath how far that actually comes out. Right. If anyone does go to this site, could you get us photographs from the sides? Yeah. We can actually see I've exactly nev- how they protrude. This would be fantastic. I never see anybody get this close, closer than this, but it looks like you're allowed to at least get up to this part. So come on, guys. Yeah. But some of these photos with these high quality cameras are really good lately because you can see, yeah, again, another standardized shape, another triangular, triangular shape. Triangular next to it. Yeah. Another triangular here, right? All these different shapes. Delphi seems to be very important because it has all this variation and a lot of clusters. It does. It does. Yeah, here again, some more triangles. Very, very important, yeah. yeah. These two, I would say, also are pretty prominent. So, Triangular in shape, too. Yep, and then they keep going. And again, they're not going to be in the upper registers. They're only going to be down here in the bottom. That's a really interesting one. Look how far that one sticks out. That could all, yeah. You could almost say, technically, there it could be used as a lifting boss, but not quite. It's still... You know, it's probably about sticks out about the same as the lip, so might as well just use the lip, guys. Come on. But yeah, and then of course it it will continue over on the right side, but we don't have that many good quality photos of that side. But this one, one of the best panoramics, because you can see really close on that lower level. And then we absolutely have, great image. And then here we have like an, another auxiliary stru- structure, and I believe Brian Forrester took a photo of this nub and this nub. And they're side by side. And that is the L-shaped block with the nub. Right, right. And he he didn't include these other ones here, but this is part of this string, I believe. It's like a string of nubs. This is like a whole sentence or something. Indeed, yeah. You've got a square. You've got some that protrude more than others, some higher on the block, some lower on the block. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, I, and they're not on the blocks above. <laughs> right, right. And here's that other angle I was talking about. Okay, let's see. So Brian got three of them. And I think there's one more out of frame here, right? So, uh, yeah. You, and you can see a bevel line above those as well, a definite surface treatment change above where the nubs are. Very faint, right? It's very faint, but you all can see that. It, it's like right along here, and then on this block, there's a vertical one. So, yeah. Yeah. Very interesting texture change. Shape change as well from rectangular to very square. Right. See the variations here. Different sizes, placements, all this. Very quirky. Okay, here's a good one. Um, now, that first one was probably the best panoramic, like we said, we're going to get. So those are probably the highest quality pictures of nubs you're going to see. But here, look at this. After it rains, you can really see the details, how the, the different colors come out. So you'll see they, yeah. really, they really protrude, like we were saying. Some of these really protrude at the bottom, maybe a good three or four inches. So it's, it's very interesting that some only maybe a, a, an inch or less, and then other ones, you know, like this. And they're very the, the shapes are obviously very different. And you can see the way the water runs off of them and how water collects on some of them and not other ones. Very interesting, the color changes around there. It could be something that we have to look at. That's right. Lighting could be another variation factor within and, the nubs. And here you can see something we didn't see before. You see this lower area. And there's nubs. And you can see them there, yeah. And that's going to be another theme in another spot in Greece going forward. 
Okay, I really like this angle because it shows the lipped block phenomena, and you can see more of the nubs here along the bottom and then going up the stairs, but for some reason right here, the blocks turned lipped. So what's that about, Phil? Absolutely, yeah, and if you notice underneath, you've got almost like a block with two nubs on and a block with one nub on, mm -hmm. and they're in different positions. It's almost like that lipped block above in the middle has none underneath them. So is this suggesting a pattern, a shape? Is it a word, all of it? It could be. It's almost like applying the nubs caused uh, the other blocks to be affected, perhaps. Yeah, 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 yeah. And as well, why that scoop to leave the lipped nature of that block above was it yeah. was the material taken out did it ooze was yeah. it compressed it does was look there squished. something pushed against these blocks to form these specific shapes yeah of course the questions of it is it was it softened you know was there a softened state that it was in uh because yeah. it, it does look squished together especially at the joinery there and i think we have another yeah, it's important to mention the stairs just quickly there as go ahead well. yes Right at the bottom, they do protrude quite far from there. So if you were stepping up and uh, you've got every chance of actually catching your feet on those. True. I have heard a couple of commenters on Twitter recently, which, okay. I mean, you, you do have to understand the complete variation of ne these nubs. But could there have been an adornment, something put on there? Well, what would you put on the front of a step so low like that? Yeah. If you were designing a step to put an adornment on, then you'd be leaving less gap on the step to step up, wouldn't you? Yes, true, true, yeah. It'd be a narrower step. So, and I think we have another angle of this. It's a little bit brighter. And it's a little less good quality, but, uh, you know, you can still see the phenomenon happening. And a little bit more to the right, again, the lipping that happens at yeah. the joinery. Right? And then up at the top, you can see the, the hole here, this 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 pinch hole or corner hole in, in one of the seats. I've noticed that hole before, Andrew. That's very fascinating how they would have got that there like that. And what was that for? They're speckled uh, throughout some of these other theaters. I think we'll see a few other examples as well. But we, we do have one really good one here close up of the stairs. So, yeah, you can see they do protrude out, especially this one in the middle. The one in the back doesn't as much. It's more of the standard unified, you know, uniform shape. And it's more... Absolutely, yeah. Uh, again, that could be depth. straight off the portcullis chamber. Same depth as the portcullis, right? Yeah, yeah, same depth. So, yeah, you can see the variation, but it's obviously, you know, odd placement if you're going to think in practical terms. The, the bottom stair nub almost seems like it's not quite formed correctly. It's like over to a slant ever so slightly compared to the others. It does. And the different positions, the one above is right at the top of the step itself. Right. The other right, bit right. above it, the standardized yeah. semicircular in the middle. Yeah. Very strange positioning. Yeah, that one looks really close to the one at Athens we were looking at in, in shape. Uh, it does. Sorry, everyone, you have to cock your head for this one. Um, and then there was one more really good one with good uh, shadows. Look at this one. I like this one. This is a beauty, isn't it? You can see the variation in shapes from standardized to triangular. Mm -hmm. You've got them on the base. You've got them on the stairs. Fantastic. And if you follow the stairs upward, you can actually almost see if to the right-hand side as they stop on the stairs. There may be a nub underneath there. That's right. They're, they're hidden. The yeah, you get you can you know the quality breaks down, but you can get kind of close here and see maybe this is one here and maybe yeah. one's over here hidden tucked in, so you wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't normally see them if it was the wrong time of day, but yeah again the clear the clear shape differentiations right this triangle right in the middle here, and this triangle over here, yeah. Okay, and we also have some other things to talk about at Delphi. You could keep going on you know for days again, uh, a few more just outlying nubs around around the perimeter of of some of these other smaller uh, circular structures. Um, Indeed, and these blocks are more, they seem more ornate and smooth, don't they? And very again, you're so. finding the nubs on the base, mm -hmm. and th there is one above on the, the blocks above to the right-hand side, mm -hmm. and I think that looks like ever so slightly more kind of triangular on the base there. And, and, a, and a filler stone as well. Filler stone, the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and there is, yeah, there's definitely a very faint bevel through these as well. And, and yeah, I, you can see the bevel at the bottom, yeah. Right, and I think I think that's all I have of that, but I also have uh, even smaller little circular structures here with you know, a little nub sticking out there. So, and then I think that's pretty much all we have to say for Delphi. We've got to keep moving, guys. Um, one other really cool wall, just me finishing up. The texturing on this one is really wild. Uh, it reminds me of another site we're going to look at, Messini. Uh, it has texturing like this, and of course these nubs at the bottom. Why are they at the bottom like this? The, obviously the scorching or different, you know, colorations on some of these blocks. 
a filler stone again. You could also say the shape on them ones, Andrew. You've got square, you've got standardised, very, very, very shallow standardised. Yeah. And I think the surface treatment of these blocks is something to mention. Mm-hmm. People have said to me that it's chiselled. Yeah. I don't quite get that whole wall. It's chiselled for me. I, it may be some sort of ornate pattern that they went for over the top of the nubs. If you were chiselling, wouldn't you have took them off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, that, that, if, that, if they weren't needed. But I, they've been definitely left at the bottom for a reason there. Sure, at that stage so, of processing on the surface, you probably would have removed all of these construction aids by then. Next is Dodoni. Dodoni has some really cool examples, some more triangles. Now, let's see. First, we're going to look at a wide perimeter shot, just to get you uh, an idea of what we're looking at here. So, mostly they're kind of uh, rough, textured surface blocks that aren't aren't hallmarked. But even from way back here, Phil, you can zoom in. You can, yeah. You can see them on the base and to the right, the triangular nubs to the right. Yeah, the plinth, right? So, they're definitely there. And we'll go to the more close-up fit- uh, photos next. Again, down here on the bottom of this plinth, we can zoom in a little closer now, and you'll see there's actually at least three on here. Two on this yeah. side, and one down here. And you can clearly see the bevel line around at the bottom. That's Absolutely right. Absolutely fantastic work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's more of this as well. This isn't an outlier. We have, yeah, this is all on the out- outskirts of the structure. We, we have uh, s- some more, like, go, like where we were at before was the, the far right in the background. Come over here to the left and look at the base of whatever this structure was. We have this little, you know, cluster of nubs around this circular element again. And if you look really close, another small one here. So it's wild. A lot of triangles that go around and then the uniform standardized shape. And then maybe a little square or round one over here. Yeah. Man, very cool. And then, let's see. I think I have, there's there's a couple more angles and lighting of that. We'll let, let that's a beauty, see. isn't it? And you can see a square one in the middle, can't you? Oh, that's right. We didn't quite see before. That's right, over here, another one. So there you go, and no, none on any of the others. And ah. <laughs> and here's a really good close-up of one of these plinths. I mean, come on, you can see the texturing, and like Phil said, these were meant to be left on. And again, you've got that bevel line around the outside and above, and almost one that splits it down the middle, haven't you? Right, right. I wonder about that. It is split, but it's like there's a bevel line there too as well. Was that where the block was supposed to be split? Are we seeing a block that was about to be split or in it the process? It was about to be split. That's an excellent analogy, Andrew. That's interesting. That's very interesting. It, it could well be that, couldn't it? And they were going to separate places. Or it was a damaged block, like this was one that they processed. Yeah. And uh, this is a, a fault in it, the, the natural fissure that they uh, exploited by accident with their with their technology or however they did this. But then maybe down here at the bottom, there's this other little tiny nub right down there by the grass. And again, it's important to remember that these are triangular. And I'm not sure what you'd call the one on the left. It's almost like a circular, I guess. But it's, it's rounded. They've gone for triangular on the both, and the one's come out better than the other. You Maybe, know? right. And one's bigger than the other, right? The one on the right that's yeah. more defined is smaller. Right, I see that. So there's a few other uh, elements here. One of them I really like that Ziggy Dan and I were looking at. Under this tree. I love that you can only see it because of the shadow. The quality isn't very good. But under this tree, along this low wall. Oh, they're definitely there. You can see the triangular nature, standardized, maybe. Yeah, even maybe the, the right shapes. Of it, if you look. That's right. They're certainly there. Certainly there, right. So they're definitely in these outlying structures. So again, not just isolated to the theaters themselves. I think that was the only good photo of them I had, right? This is just showing. Uh, there's a couple more. Aha, look, look at these. Very, 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 very faint. You can almost miss them. And again, the quality breaks down but a small standardized shape and then more of a triangular one right here. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay, and next we're going to go over to Ephesus, and we could spend all day talking about all the different interesting hallmarks and features at Ephesus. But again, for brevity here, we're going to talk about just the theater. And first we'll point out, aha, there's interesting things around the outside. You've got the damage holes straight away, haven't you, Andrew? What we call the damage holes, and they're yes. all around lipstone yes. everywhere on here. Right, yes, yes, same phenomenon again. Some of them don't have lips, but other ones, they obviously do. It doesn't seem um, uniform. It seems more like a, a byproduct or an after effect of the processing of the stone. 
It's like a, it, does. it does look kind of a, a you know unesthetic. It's 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 not a refined treatment. They should have uh, knocked this off and the nubs to make it a nice smooth wall, but they never did. They left it all. I think with the nub nub lip block to the left, I think it almost looks like a pitted middle, very fine bevel line towards the bottom of it. You might be right. It might not be a bevel line, but it's definitely a pitted middle underneath the lipped block. Mm -hmm. Now, is that a rectangular and a standardized semicircular? I mean, misformed maybe? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Def they're definitely not on the block to the right of it. No, and then the ones over here about the same size. And you see the, the the distance between the two, right? So these two are very close together. These two are far apart on these blocks, these different size blocks. Yet they're about the same size nubs. Very interesting. Again, yeah, maybe broken off on that one. But they would have probably been about this size. Absolutely. Very interesting damage holes, right? Agreed. Lots of them. I, I think, think we'll ask everyone at this point, what do you think the damage holes were? Yeah, they, they because. They're Why not, aren't they on every single block? What were they trying to get out? What was going on with these holes? How were they blown out? I agree, right? They, they don't look like they were uh, scavenged because it would have been more of a standardized uh, destruction. They would have just gone yeah. for every single joinery, right? This is more uh, this is more like a phenomenon akin to the nubs and the pinch holes and some of these other things, just quirky. Uh, absolutely. Maybe, maybe that's it's another day, isn't it? We could do a blown out hole sure, episode. Sure, maybe it's not damaged. Maybe that's we're using the wrong nomenclature, but... Yeah. yeah, we'll move yeah. on. We'll we'll keep going. There's lots of other cool aspects here. Again, like a plinth, you see down here at the bottom. They need to cut the grass, but you can see there is a nub. Clearly, see there's a nub. Yeah, yeah. How cool is that? Just one, and we'll see others like this at other sites. And then how about this one? Yeah, again. So you see, first of the damage holes, of course, and then the lips blocks, and then speckled in between, very faintly, you'll see. One or two little nubs that have survived, and I don't know. It's kind of they're in a tr they're uh, in proximity to the damage holes, so maybe again, yeah. is there a surface treatment going on that's going haywire here when they're making the nubs and accidentally does this? You can obviously see all this discoloration, this, this scarring or scorching. So, and we have a couple more angles of that. Here's one in good lighting, so you can see. You can clearly see the nubs from here on those. From here, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Those same ones. And then one final photo here, the right-hand side. You see Probably the clearest example you can see the nubs on around the lipstone, isn't it, Andrew? Yeah, that's about as close as I can get. But you guys can clearly see there's a few nubs here. One of them looks like it has a hole in it, which is something yeah. you see at the Cori Concha in Peru. Some of these nubs have holes in them or blown out like they've uh, exploded or popped. The one at Baalbek, the triangular one on the base, that's got a circular hole directly through the middle of it. There you go, right? And then, yeah, these continue on down and there's more speckled nubs in throughout this. Do you notice the rebar that's going up to the left-hand side? I know oh, yeah. that there's holes that's got to go through the stone on them. Not sure whether later additions to some of these stones may have affected some of the more ancient work. You never know. It gets hard to tell. Well, the quality breaks down, but it does look like these are like some kind of telescoping poles to support this. It might have. It might have had more in the past, and this is the interior part that's falling. You know, the exterior fell away, and this is what's exposed. Yeah. Right. Right. I wonder where those other blocks were. I'd love to see those. They probably had nubs on so them. So would I. Did they have nubs on? Right. And you see more of this damage <coughs> hole phenomenon going around the corner. Pinching, maybe. Interesting stuff. None on the inside of this theater, surprisingly. Okay. And next, we're going to go to Gitana. And Gitana is a small little theater, but they're excavating it, and they're finding more bits of it. It looks like they're also restoring it at the same time. So... Some of these steps and seats might not be the originals, but we do still have some remnants. We'll show you a, little, yeah. show you a quick overview here. It's pretty impressive, actually, when you see the overview. You know, it's pretty extensive. It is, it is. When it's fully excavated, it's going to be some site, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. And you see the, the, the devastated seats over here. Again, like we're going to see that later on as well in other sites. Okay, and then we'll go to some close-ups. Well, first we'll... We'll do some nice picturesque photos. This is before they excavated, right? This is all that was exposed. So you can see they had more to find. And if, if, if these patterns are like the other patterns of the other theaters, there could be nubs up in these upper rows. You can see they one bottom left of it. that if you've got a train going. Oh, you, that's the, that is the one. We're actually going to talk about that one. <laughs> you, you have the best trained eye, Phil, because I think this is one of the lonelier nubs at our site. Uh, yeah. I think there's maybe one or two. Yeah, I think we'll pick this one here. 
So here you go. I think that's the one you spotted right down here at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's the shape as well, Andrew, the triangular shape that we keep coming across. All these sites at the moment around Greece and Turkey seem to show a heavy concentration of this triangular nub, don't they? They do, they do. It's like it's almost a, a, a regional branding. You're, or, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and then there's one more, I believe, up a little higher. Can you see this one? You though? can just about see it, can't you? And then you've got to note as well that yep. kind of almost rectangular nature, square nature to that one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, right. A different shape. And I wish we had more. Like you would expect them to to be expressed up the stairs along the side here. But for quite some... a lot of those stairs look repurposed, though, Andrew. I mean, we see a see? lot around Greece. Yeah. And Turkey, this kind of like the newer stone and the older stone, you can kind of distinguish, can't you, which is the new and the old. But they use a lot of this grey, white, blackened and darkened stoned contrast, don't they? They do, they do. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely you have to keep a keen eye on, on what blocks you're looking at, what's ancient, what's modern. Maybe a bevel edge on the one to the right-hand side, three up. Is that a bevel edge line, do you think? Probably, yeah. I see it there. It goes pretty straight. And I think there might be a couple other nice photos that we can see that. I think this one might have been the only other nice one. Ah, here's a couple more nubs. Yeah. Look way back here. Now it gets really pixelated. I know. Sorry, guys. But these two blocks, if you can see that. And that's a standardized circular nub. I think that's... The, Again, yeah. could be on the Paul Cullis chamber in Egypt, Andrew. I bet there was probably a lot you know, down here in the bottom, and then maybe they've restored them and taken those away. I wonder where they put yeah. them. You know, sometimes these end up in museums or something, or maybe in a, in a, in a field. I certainly think we can't take this as an original configuration. No. Unfortunately, until the whole excavation's done, and maybe later than that, we're never going to see this site completely original, but the, right. there's definitely yes. nubs there as we're excavating it right now. So Absolutely. Yeah, these are the exciting ones because you know there's there's more of these out there like this being excavated. Okay, and then a final parting shot here at Gatana. You can see how much more could be under the surface on this hilltop in the background. Yeah, perfect case for LiDAR, isn't it, Andrew? I agree. Yeah, you can see all the little outlines of structures and who knows how deep some of those go. So, Indeed, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. It's a very cool setting. Next, we're going to go to Halicarnassus. It's probably one of the most uh, prolific nub examples that we have. I mean, and immediately your eyes are drawn all over the top left, sweeping all around to the right hand side, where underneath that lip that we've been talking about all episode, you are seeing our nubs different positions, different sizes. Mm -hmm. And when you zoom into these, I mean, it's the placement that. For once, they're all over the theatre, aren't they? We're not just seeing them at the bottom. Right, right. We are seeing them everywhere. It kind of leaves but me... not on every block, not on every block. Right, right. It kind of leaves me speechless because it's, it's an inversion, first of all, because they're up at the middle registers or the top rows versus none at the bottom. And the clustering is amazing. Like some of these, like you said, Phil, they've got all kinds of different shapes and sizes. We have them on that lipped... Uh, seat again underneath a purchase point and like it seems to just sputter along and seems to have somewhat uniformity but not quite complete uniformity and then it just sputters out there's a few and then it stops maybe maybe one or two more over here and then aha the other cluster starts so why is that yeah. that's very weird this little gap here and if you were gonna if you were gonna look at the nubs as a language this would probably be the biggest selection that we've got in its entirety that you can look at in a panoramic view. We can take measurements of sizes, shapes, variations. And if this is saying something, then isn't this oh. the best example that you could get that's you... untouched at the moment? In my opinion, yes. Agreed. They, look how high they go. They, they go all the way up to the top. All the way to the top. That's, yeah. that's impressive. Panoramic, panoramic. It's a panoramic, one of the only panoramic theatres We've got the covered in yeah. nubs everywhere. Yeah, it's perfect for standing at the bottom and seeing these from like an from the the presenter's perspective or the conductor's. Absolutely, and then it brings back that point of is lighting water. We saw that on a prior set of nubs on this episode. That's right. The daytime are the variations of shape. 
size, positioning. It's all got to be relative to something. I'd love to hear your views on that, guys. Okay, here's another angle. With great lighting again, you can see the shadows off of all of them. Yeah, it's like you're standing almost on the base of the theatre, looking up into these rows. Mm -hmm. They're not on the bottom rows as much as they are on the middle rows in this example. So it yeah, yeah. gives us an even deeper mystery on this. And how about the stairs? They look devoid of nubs on the stairs for the most part. So you'd have to ask, are the stairs repurposed? They don't seem so. It's not in, no, maybe not in all cases. This this lower stuff, there might be patches of new stuff. Yeah, yeah, patches for sure, yeah. But, and you, know. that, that you can clearly see that the nubs start further up and go higher up within the tiers of oh, this yeah. specific amphitheatre, Odeon. Yeah, 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 even all the way to the top. So this is just an amazing example. Maybe there is one or two, we'll say... I guess I'm, I know it's getting fuzzy. We're guessing down here, but there could be some at the foundation. Maybe level. some shallow examples. I mean, really need close up, yeah, yeah brilliant yeah. pictures of these. So if you're away, can you snap us a shot, send them over to the Ancient History Criticisms Ancient Alternative View channels on Twitter? We'd appreciate that. Thank you. Please, yes. And look, we have one close up of this upper area underneath these seats right there. Just one, one lonely nub. And behind it, maybe two. At the bottom here, where you've almost got the same as in Greece, haven't you? This bevel-edged pitted middle effect in the the blocks at the top and the bottom with the nubs involved. We see that a lot, don't we, with the nubs, Andrew? That's right. That's right. It almost looks like a like a sponge if you cut it straight. Yeah, very interesting. And then maybe yeah, this is some modern concrete down here propping these steps up. You can tell the difference here, right, guys? Absolutely. And I think we're going to finish up today at Hierapolis because we're running a little short on time, guys. We're already over the hour mark, and we don't want to stretch this out too long. We're going to have to make it part two, um, but we wanted to end it on a, on a banger, so we definitely, definitely want to get this one in here at the end. So we'll start out with one of the best photos that I've ever seen of Theater Nights. Uh, me too. So Straight away, they jump out at you, don't they, Andrew? The variation. The styling, two on a block, one on a block. Absolute banger of a photo. Really, really clear. Still quite a lot to be excavated on this site, if I'm honest. So right. we may still have more nubs to find. But do you mm -hmm. remember that charring that we saw earlier on? That's right. That's right. Again, we see, see the dark nubs. here as well, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. And it's isolated to this corner. It, all these nubs are clustered onto this corner and a little bit into the archway. But otherwise, we haven't really found them anywhere else. Absolutely. And you know as well on this these examples, the, the nubs actually in some instances are different colours than the other ones. That's right, that's <laughs> right. Some of them are like a sandy colour, other ones obviously look like burnt almost. We see this in Peru sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, very very good photo. I love this one. And we have another angle too. Straight on the base. There you we go. Won't, we won't say lifting nubs at that point, Andrew. Here we get a better look at these on the corner and see the colours yeah. again. Yeah, very interesting. They're darker. They kind of sag a little bit. Some of them do. And then they're smaller, obviously, in different profiles, each one. You've kind of got the L-shaped blocks as well, haven't you, in that? Ah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Another hallmark. Again, yeah, these, these hallmarks overlap at these sites. Okay. This is an absolute beauty, isn't it, Andrew? Yeah, yeah. We'll you can actually see the different shapes variation placement with on the block yeah yeah agreed and we'll probably close up on this one this is probably one of the best ones we have that's got the detail and we can zoom in a little bit farther but yeah the different colors down here at the bottom it's a little darker the sandier color the reddish tint on some of them that's interesting and yeah all, all the different placements very 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 unique expression up this wall they're not standardized those are very straight all. blocks as well andrew on these yeah. ones they're extremely straight yeah. no polygonal nature no. the l shape isn't there it's almost as ornate as what the coricancha looks isn't it for exquisiteness and nothing in hey. between the blocks you know you could fit a slice of paper nowhere near between those you know i agree yeah some of these other places like athens too had that where the blocks get very very refined yeah nice ashlar construction so <laughs> What we'd like to uh, thank you for before we leave you today, guys, mm -hmm. is joining us today. And if you get time, please go and have a look at the link in the bottom of this video. Mm -hmm. And this will take you to Ancient History Views, the new channel with Andrew and myself, Phil. And we will see you on part two.
very soon in the next few days and we hope not to uh, wait too long for that to come out and then hopefully from that we'll see you live on the new channel ancient history views thanks very much for having me andrew it's been an absolute pleasure working with you again we'll have the, yeah. the second half of this mystery for you in a, in a little in a little while maybe a week or so so thank you guys for hanging out with us again today and we will talk to you next time Thank you.